Hi everybody, welcome to English 2 Review. Uh, we have completed the uh, 12 units, uh, the uh, 12 units and uh, 24 lectures. Now, uh, before the uh, tests, we're going to do a quick review of the material. Okay, nothing fancy, but it shows you how you can use your textbook for the review. If you have not been uh, reviewing the material over the course of the semester, uh, certainly now is a good time to do it. Okay. In a few weeks, you will have uh, your final written test and you will be able to uh, you'll be able to finish the course at that time. So today we're going to have a couple of lectures uh, reviewing material from the textbook. Okay. So if you are um, if you have your textbook at home, uh, you can use this. If you've already done the review, uh, you might want to do it again um, using the material uh, on the uh, video lecture here. Okay. Um, here in your book. Uh, we're going to do two lectures. So for the first one, I'm going to review material from uh, units one to six. And uh, in the second lecture, we'll look at some material from uh, units seven to 12. So let's begin. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, grammar from page, uh, well, page five. And what we're going to do is look at uh, the present progressive tense and the two different uh, times you would use it. So if you look at um, your book on page five at the grammar explanation, okay. So present progressive, we know these sentences. It is raining, take your umbrella. What are they doing now? They're studying in the library, okay? So that's progressive. We're using this kind of tense with the be verb and the ing form. Okay, uh, and of course the subject. These are things that are happening basically right now. Right? I guess the word is currently. Okay. Um, also for ongoing events over a longer period of time. And you can use these, these colorful scales here to show you. So you're in the middle of something right now, or you're in the middle of something what these days, or Yojimin. Okay. So uh, we're going to look at that on uh, page page 11. Okay. And on page 11, it was, you can see this is something we call the grammar review. Okay. So this is going to be very helpful for the speaking test, uh, sorry, for the, uh, the written test. On the written test, you will uh, be asked to uh, ask, answer many questions, dealing with uh, vocabulary, dealing with uh, grammar, um, structure. So we're going to take one, uh, one activity from each grammar review page uh, in units one through six. Okay. So today we're just going to look at uh, part A on page 11. And And you're going to, as it says here, uh, you're going to use the present progressive to fill in the blanks with the words. So you see that with the example here. She is still living in Los Angeles. Okay. So the verb is live, but we're using the ing form. Okay. Uh, so you can do that with all these other verbs. You're going to match these verbs uh, with these sentences. Uh, you're going to fill in the blanks. Please note there are eight verbs. And only seven sentences. Get six for you, and one for the example. Okay. Probably the first thing you want to identify is if it is something that is ongoing at the present time, okay, so currently. And if that's happening, you can put an O. So for number one, he is busy now. Okay. 
he is doing his homework? I guess the answer. Yeah. Now, he's busy now, so that's something that is ongoing at the present time. Okay. The example here, she is still living in Los Angeles. Okay, that's over a, a longer period of time. It's not something she's doing right now. It's something that is, um, is, is happening over a long period of time. So you can put a P there. Okay. All right, so fill in the blanks with the ING form, and then note if there's a P or an O. Okay. You can uh, pause the activity, and then we will review. Okay, let's take a look at the answers here. Uh, right, so he is busy now. He is doing his homework. My book is on the night table. I am reading it when I have time, or I read it when I have time. Uh, Diego and Luis are watching soccer in the living room. Their team is winning. And I'll skip down to number five. Betsy is working on the weekends. She wants to save money. All right, so for Sam, uh, number four, Sam is blank, a taxi to the airport. His flight leaves soon. His flight is leaving soon. So this is the verb take. And of course, to add the ing, uh, looks a bit weird. Make sure you remove that e from that silent e at the end of the verb. Same, exercise. The verb is exercise. I exercise every morning. Okay. These days, Zhenghua and Jiang are exercising. So remove that silent e. You don't need it uh, after you put the i down. Okay. So you need that. Um, now, I, I didn't go over the uh, prolonged and uh, ongoing uh, designation. So things that are happening over a long period of time, we'll put prolong, okay? So these days, Zhenghua and Jiang are exercising every morning. I don't know if they're doing it now. Maybe it's not morning. But these days, they are um, exercising every morning. Okay, so that should be correct. Also, Betsy is working on the weekends, okay? not just this weekend, uh, not last weekend, but every weekend. So that's another prolonged activity. Okay? Another answer, two. My book is on the night table. I'm reading it when I have time. So these days, uh, when I have time, it's probably before I go to bed. So again, that's these days, so generally uh, this time. Uh, all the other ones are dealing with right now, so an ongoing activity that's happening as we speak. Okay? He's busy now. They are watching the living, living room now. Team is winning now. Where is Sam? He is taking a taxi to the airport. Okay, So this should be all correct. Um, these have to be capital letters too, otherwise you get them wrong. These are all correct. Okay, good. All right. So again, so when you're talking about things that are happening now, okay, at the present time, okay, or if you're talking about over a longer period, uh, you can use this uh, present progressive tense, the present continuous tense. Okay. All right. We're going to move uh, eight pages into the future to page 19. This is unit two. And we're going to continue with the work right here. So on page, uh, page 19, we're going to look at adverbs of frequency and the structure within the sentence. Okay. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to read each of these six sentences and you're going to rewrite them correctly. Okay. So if you want to, um, uh, do number one, it says, Emma always is late to class. Okay, sounds pretty good, but uh, I think we can do better. I, I would never say it like that. You've got all the words, but uh, they're not in exactly the right places, or they're not exactly in the right places, or they're not in the places exactly. Emma always is late for class. I think I would say Emma is 
always late for class. Okay, good. Now, uh, you can write that down here, um, and we're going to review this when we're done. Okay, so I'll see you. So pause the track, and then we'll review as a group. All right, here are the answers. Um, not much to, to explain here. Each of these, you have a, a subject, and then you have a verb. So number three is probably the easy example, easiest example, uh, a subject, a verb, an object. Okay, so it's a standard structure of English. And as opposed to subject, object, verb in Korean. Um, now in here, the adverb of frequency goes before the verb. And you can see that in each of these. So usually is before the verb go sometimes is before the verb like okay uh here we have the verb and she's talking about afterwards okay uh, and we see that here too the adverb of frequency is coming after the verb uh so this is the be verb so that's a bit different because usually where there's a be verb uh, it's followed by an adjective okay so it's here where you have a standard subject verb object this is a subject verb adjective okay so emma is late emma is always late okay so the adverb of frequency comes before the adjective okay um again because it's the be verb so the the be verb is a bit existential so emma is always late they are always late uh we are always late i am always late so whatever the be verb is it will be the it will precede the adverb of frequency okay good now down here uh i exercise a week once okay so that's all the information you need of course the correct answer is i exercise once a week okay so in here as opposed to say i sometimes exercise and putting the adverb of frequency uh before the verb here you're giving the action, the subject and the verb, and then you're giving us a frequency phrase. Okay, so in this case it would be a number of times divided well, with a period of time. Okay, so when you have, uh, if you want to say twice a week, okay, so that's twice or two times, and uh, the period of time uh, you would have. Um, uh, whether it's a week or a month or a day. So that, that is a structure that we studied in unit two. Okay. So that would come after the verb or after the object even. So if I play cards uh, once a week, right, it would come at the end of the sentence, if not exactly before uh, the date that they specify here. Okay. So again, watch that structure. It's explained in a bit more detail on uh, page 13, uh, but you can figure that out. Okay. All right, and if you have time, you can also do uh, the other answers in the grammar review. Okay. All right, now let's blast ahead to unit three. Unit three, we'll look at the uh, review page on page 27. Page 27, uh, <clears throat> you'll probably want to start with A, which will be a review of countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Um, and you can probably figure out that from the grammar uh, introduction on page 21. Uh, we're going to skip down to part B. This might be the uh, activity that encapsulates both the count and non-count nouns but also some of the vocabulary and lexical phrases needed in this unit. Okay. All right. Circle the correct word in the following sentences. Okay. So you're given two choices at some point in the sentence. Uh, read the sentence, paying special attention to the word after, and uh, choose between the two choices in each number. 
When we come back, we will review. All right, let's look at these answers. How did you do? Okay, uh, I didn't go over the example at the top, uh, but right, how much water? Okay, so we know water is not a countable noun. There's a, a, a an amount of it, but we don't we cannot uh, really say uh, how many waters do you drink every day. You could say how many glasses of water do you drink every day, because a glass is countable, but not the contents inside. Okay. Uh, right, so that gives me number one. There are many cups next to the sink. Okay? So we can see the object um, is plural. With, oh, sorry, with a plural S. So we know those are, if there can be one cup, there are two cups, you're able to count them. Okay? So that's how many. So how much water, how many cups. Uh, let's skip down to number four. That might help us a bit here with the um, some of the words. We have a potatoes, we have some potatoes. So like in number one, we can see that we're using a non count, sorry, a count noun, and there's maybe more than one. So a uh, cannot be the answer. We have some potatoes. So you can use some with a countable noun if there is maybe a high number. If you look at number four, we have some potatoes in the cupboard. How many potatoes do you have? I don't know. 23? Anyway, we have a lot of potatoes. Okay? We have some potatoes in the cupboard. So again, I don't know the number, but we have more than a few, more than two or three. Okay. So, uh, so that's something that we have. Uh, look at number three, something we don't have. Okay, So we have some potatoes. We don't have some cake for the party. Okay, Now if don't was here and we said we have, we have some cake for the party. Would you like some cake? We have cake. Okay, But the fact is they don't have it. If they don't have, uh, we usually use the word any. If we don't have any cake. We don't have a lot. We don't have a little. We don't have one single crumb. We don't have any cake for the party. Okay. So we don't have any and we have some. Okay. Those are like lexical phrases. It's like one word. Okay. So remember that uh, for your written test. Number two, as we did with uh, the example, water. Can't really count it. So is there some milk in the refrigerator? Is there any milk in the refrigerator? Um, these are both correct. Probably the best answer is any. Okay. So some isn't really wrong, but I think this seems to be the most common. Is there any milk? Like any. All right. So I, I don't know if there's um, uh, a little bit or a lot, but I just need to know if there is. It's really a yes or no question. So once you if the answer is yes, then I'm going to find out how much. Okay. So in questions or negative statements, we often use the word any. Okay. And in positive statements, uh, you can see the use of the word some. Okay. Like this one. Number six, please buy some fish at the store. Okay. Now, I guess you could say, please buy any fish, but that sounds like any type of fish. Okay whether it's uh, gulbi or uh, godunga, okay? those are two different types of fish. Well, which type do you want? Oh, any, any type, okay? But we're looking for an amount. Please buy some fish at the store, okay? So it should, the answer should be some if we're talking about amounts, okay? Good, so these are all the answers. Number five, I don't eat much pasta. I don't eat many types of pasta. I don't eat many dishes of pasta. Okay. So if you can count the container, uh, then you'd say many, just like a, this one, many cups, much water. Okay. Um, but I don't eat much pasta. So even though pieces of pasta, that would be many, uh, but generally pasta is a non-count noun. Okay. 
So you have to figure out if it is a, a count or non-count noun. You have to figure out if it's a, a question or a, a negative. Maybe a question here or a negative. Um, and you have to figure out if it's plural. So these different elements uh, change your decision to uh, which answer is correct. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move on to unit four. And unit four should be on page 35. The review should be here on page 35. So when you so on page 35, we're going to do one of the activities, and I think we'll do part A, uh, just because it's the simplest. Um, so it says here, complete the sentences using past forms of do or be. Okay. So when you're doing this, you will actually have to make uh, yeah, the past forms of do or be. Uh, with do, the past form is did. With be, uh, it's going to be was or were. And that will depend on the subject that you are discussing. Okay. So quite simply, um, to write down either did, was, or were in one of these blanks here, in each of these blanks, uh, one to six. Okay. And then you can pause it, and then we're going to review it. All right, uh, let's look at the practice activity. Okay. Simple enough. Okay. So with this, you've got six possible answers, okay? Now, as you see in the example here, uh, it says, did you go to Jerry's party? Okay. Now, in these sentences, you're going to find some of the sentences, like number three and four, they have a, a subject, and then they have a past, or then they have a, a verb, okay? like an actual verb. Okay. So that, it'll have the same structure as this sentence here. So you go to Jerry's party on Friday. Okay. Uh, the answer might be, I went to Jerry's party on Friday. Okay. But what about the question? <clears throat> Did you? So the same thing here, three, I found his wallet at home. Okay. That's a statement. And the question needs a Is the word did. Okay, so it needs an auxiliary verb. Okay, and we're using the past tense for this. Okay, uh, now you could <laughs> do they like your food, but we know from the instructions that we're talking about the past. Okay, so this one two, an auxiliary verb for this. So with questions with past tense questions, the past simple, we use the auxiliary verb, and it's in the past tense. The actual verb stays, the action verb, stays in the present tense, okay? Now, some of these sentences, like this one here, number five, okay, uh, there's no verb. You have a, a, a subject, you have an adjective, and you have a time period, so there's no verb, okay? So probably uh, this is going to be the be verb, okay? Because we're talking about a past event, so and it's going to be yes or no, okay? Like all these other answers. So is the weather warm? Well, no, we're talking about yesterday. So was. Was the weather warm yesterday? Okay, good. Uh, same thing with number one. No verb. Subject, okay? You have a place and you have a time period. Okay, so there's no verb at all. So uh, is you? Was you, were you? Were you at home last night? Okay, so was I at home? Was he at home? Was she at home? Okay, so in that case, we could use the uh, verb was, or was it at home? Was it warm yesterday? So were you at home yesterday? Number two. Okay, now this one, number two and number six, you can see these ing forms. Okay, so in these ones we're looking for, okay, we're looking to use the uh, past perfect or the past uh, progressive. Sorry. Okay. So something she was doing at the time. So when you saw her, okay, at that time in the past, what was she doing? 
was she working? Okay. So we know from the uh, present progressive, she is working. She is working right now, or she is working these days. Okay. So in the question, is she working? Right, we're using the past tense. We're talking about a past event. Now? No, back when you saw her. When you saw her, at that time, was she working? Okay, so again, you have the, the be verb, the subject, and the verb in the ing form. Number six, <clears throat> same thing, same structure. Subject, she, your friends, working, looking, or looking for, you. Where's the uh, verb? We see the verb looking. Where's the, so it's the ing, so we're using the present progressive. Yeah, you could say that. Are your friends looking for you? But we know from the instructions we're talking about the past. Okay, so were your friends looking for you? So these should all be correct. Good. All right. Okay. So you've done that. You can do the other activities here on page 35. All right, let's continue out to unit five. Let's see what we can do there. It should be on page 43. Okay, so on page 43, there's actually four uh, review activities. All pretty good. Should do them. We're going to focus on uh, activity C. Okay, uh, now this is a, a problem that a lot of students have, so I want to give you the opportunity to review this as uh, much as possible okay uh, <clears throat> so again much like we did in unit two uh, review circle the correct word in the following sentences okay so given a sentence at one point you have to choose between the correct form so in each sentence you're given two adjectives it's the same root word they're both adjectives, so they're exactly the same, except they're not. Okay. Uh, so, example: I was exciting to see your brother play in the final match. I was excited to see your brother play in the final match. Okay. Now, can you distinguish the difference? Use this example. Okay. Use this example as learning material. Uh, review what we studied in unit five, and then you can do numbers one through five. When you're finished, I'll give you the lecture, and then we'll review the answers. Okay. So uh, press pause, and we'll, you can do the activity. Okay, finished. It should be a good review. Uh, so in this activity, uh, yeah. So in the example, I was excited, and that's maybe a key phrase. The subject was excited. So when you have something that is excited, uh, it is the uh, effect. I'll put an E over it here. Right? So it's, it's the effect because it is affected by this thing that is exciting. Okay. So the cause of the excitement is exciting. The effect of the excitement is excited. Okay, so what's the cause of the excitement? Your brother playing in the final match. Okay, that okay, was the cause of the excitement. It was exciting. I was excited. Okay, so the cause and the effect. Now you can see that in numbers uh, in all of these. Um, the easiest ones are one, three, and five, it seems to me. Okay, let's look at them. Number one, the cartoon on. TV this morning was amused, amusing, right, was amusing, okay, like we said here, it's the cause, the cause of the amusement, I was amused, okay, we were amused, okay, we laughed very much at the cartoon, the cartoon caused the amusement, it was amusing, okay, now, you know the answer is not um, amused, because the subject is the cartoon on TV. The cartoon on TV does not have feelings. Okay, I have feelings. That's why I was excited. 
That's why I was amused. I have feelings, okay? Feelings with a letter E, okay? <clears throat> Same thing with the uh, documentaries, okay? A documentary does not have feelings, so it can't be interested. It can be the source, it can be the cause of the interest, but I am interested, or we are interested, or were interested, okay? So I was interested, I was amused, I was excited, okay? But a cartoon cannot be uh, amusing. A documentary cannot, sorry, a, do a cartoon cannot be amused. It has no feelings. A documentary cannot be interested, okay? It cannot respond or react to interest. Same thing with five. What's the subject? The kitchen. Does the kitchen have feelings? No. So probably, whatever the circumstance, it is disgusting. Maybe I was disgusted. I was disgusted. I looked at the disgusting kitchen. Okay. So in one, three, and five, it's pretty easy to figure out what the correct verb is. Okay. So again, these are inanimate objects. They don't have feelings. The answers are I and G for all three. <clears throat> okay. Uh, two and four do have a subject with feelings. So Ted is a human being. Maybe he is surprising. Maybe he is surprised. Okay. And this one, the answer is surprised. Okay. He has feelings. Um, so he was surprised to fail the test. What was surprising? What was the cause? Well, him failing the test. Okay. Why was it surprising? Because he studied. Okay. So this was the cause of the surprise. Ted was surprised. So the cause and the effect. Number four is kind of it's kind of difficult. I'm not exactly sure which one is uh, we're looking at here. Uh, our teacher was boring, bored. No students came to class. Well, I think the answer is here. Okay. Now number four, you have two subjects with feelings. Okay, you have a human being here, and you have human beings over here. So I don't know who is bored. Is the teacher bored or the students bored? Okay. So probably the teacher was boring. He was the cause of the boredom. Okay? Maybe he was a bad teacher or droned on in front of his computer. Okay? Uh, but the students were the effect. They received the boredom. They were bored. Okay? So the, maybe the students were bored. Or maybe, here's another thing, maybe our teacher was bored. Why? Because no students came to class. No students, no teaching. Okay, so had no teaching, maybe the teacher had nothing to do. Maybe this teacher was bored. Okay, so this is a bit tricky. I'm not exactly sure who is the cause and who is the effect, but I think for number four, the answer is uh, boring. Our teacher was boring, therefore students uh, did not want to come to class. Okay. Okay. So find the cause of the amusement. Okay. Uh, the surprise, the interest, the boredom, the disgust. Okay. And if it is the uh, same as the subject, then you can circle that. Okay. It's quite easy. Okay. Good. Um, for the final unit, uh, I don't think there's too much to review here. Uh, I think you can probably get this with the uh, comparatives and superlatives. Okay, so just go through those and review them on your own. It'll be a good review, but I sense that the students uh, were able to figure this out. In our second lecture, we'll look at uh, activities in the uh, second half of the textbook. Okay, so I'll see you in lecture two.